according to the latest information from the Australian arm of the company, prospective electric vehicle buyers in Australia may have to wait until March 2019 for a bite at the latest edition of Nissan's all-electric Leaf. Nissan officially launched the completely reinvented next-generation Leaf in Japan September last year, revealing a mass-market EV, $28,992 with 400 km range, boosted acceleration and a range of new technologies. At that time, Renew Economy was told that the new Leaf was expected to reach the Australian market in the second half of 2018, although Nissan Australia stressed that that date was still to be confirmed. As Renew Economy reported at the time, the new take on the global bestseller is expected to be a key player in the nascent market for mainstream electric cars, particularly in Australia, where uptake has been going backwards over the past couple of years. One of the key factors behind Australia's retrograde market has been the distinct lack of electric vehicle availability. As Bryce Gatton noted in his article, Australians wishing to buy an EV currently have only five models to choose from, three of which are in the prestige price range. The new Nissan, as well as the Hyundai Ioniq, were expected to change that with their arrival later this year. But new information from Nissan Australia suggests the LEAF 2.0 won't reach Australian shores before the end of March, 2019, at around the same time as Tesla's own mass-market offering, the Model 3, is expected to hit the market. Again, however, Nissan Australia says firm dates are yet to be confirmed. The updated delivery schedule followed the news that the Japanese car maker is ramping up its electric vehicle production, with a target of eight new pure electric models to be rolled out over the next four years. The company also said it was targeting sales of one million electrified vehicles, either pure EVs or hybrid models, annually by fiscal year 2022 with an eye to driving sales in key global markets including China and Japan. The price of the new Leaf in Australia is also as yet unknown, and according to Nissan, won't be announced until the car is launched. Subaru continues to dribble out teaser images of its all-new 2019 Forester ahead of its reveal Wednesday at the New York Auto Show. The image, posted to Subaru's Facebook page, once again focuses on Forester's rear end, and specifically, the pincer-shaped white rear tail light that carries over from the Missive concepts. Only this time, the photo is taken in broad daylight, so we can make out a little more of what's happening on that tailgate area. There are scooped out recesses above the rear bumper and around the license plate and a water cargo opening, as noted here previously. There's also some black plastic body cladding. Previous spy shots have suggested the crossover will retain the boxy shape and grille of the current model, but with some subtle side body creases like those found on the Impreza and Cross Trek is expected to ride on Subaru's global architecture platform, while engine options aren't known. The current Forester's base engine is a 2.5-liter horizontally opposed four-cylinder making 170 horsepower, with an optional turbocharged 2.0-liter that makes 250 horsepower and 258 pounds FT of torque. We'll know more tomorrow, when Subaru takes the wraps of the redesigned Forester in New York. Moody's downgraded Tesla's credit ratings Tuesday and changed its outlook to negative from stable, citing significant shortfall in the Model 3 production rate in a tight financial situation. The credit ratings agency also said the electric car maker will likely need to raise more money in the near future to meet its cash needs and maintain its expected pace of expansion. Moody's lowered its corporate family rating on Tesla to B3 from B2 and downgraded its rating on the company's senior notes to K1 from B3. The speculative grade liquidity rating was cut to SGL4 from SGL3. 
Tesla declined to comment on the Moody's downgrade. S&P has a negative B rating on Tesla and a negative outlook, as of April 2017. Moody's said in a release, Tesla's ratings reflect the significant shortfall in the production rate of the company's Model 3 electric vehicle. Tesla's rating could be lowered further if there are shortfalls from its updated Model 3 production targets. Elon Musk's electric car company had planned to produce 5,000 Model 3 sedans a week by the end of last year, but has since pushed that goal out by half a year. The automaker's shares were mildly lower in after-hours trading Tuesday. They fell 8.2% during the day to their lowest since February 2017 after the National Transportation Safety Board tweeted it was investigating a fatal Tesla car crash. Shares are now down 28% from their record high reached in September and in bear market territory. The price on Tesla's eight-year junk bond, which matures in 2025, fell to its lowest since it was issued in August. According to IHS Market, it hit 90.8 cents late Tuesday afternoon just ahead of the Moody's announcement. The yield, which moves inversely to price, rose to 6.91%, the data showed. Tesla raised a more than expected $1.8 billion in August for that junk bond offering to fund accelerated production for its Model 3 sedan, despite poor appetite at the time for risky assets. Traders have been betting heavily against the electric car maker's bonds amid growing worries about the electric car maker's ability to deliver on its production goals. Sam Pearson, Director, Securities Finance, at IHS Market said in a Monday note, 99% of lendable supply for shorting Tesla's high-yield bond has been used. The Moody's release said, Tesla had $3.4 billion in cash and securities at the end of last year, and $1.9 billion through its asset-based lending facility. This liquidity position is not adequate to cover, one, the approximately $500 million in minimum cash that we estimate Tesla must maintain for normal operations. Two, a 2018 operating cash burn that will approximate $2 billion if Tesla maintains high discretionary capital expenditures to increase capacity. And 3. Convertible debt maturities of approximately $1.2 billion through early 2019. These cash needs will likely require Tesla to undertake a near-term capital raise exceeding $2 billion. Moody's said in the release, these cash needs will likely require Tesla to undertake a near-term capital raise exceeding $2 billion. Nissan is using old leaf batteries in a very meta way, to power street lights that will make roads safer for vehicles and pedestrians. Call the light reborn, it uses a solar panel that charges up a battery, which can then power the LED at night with no external connection required. Nissan is testing the product today in Nami, Japan, a city that was abandoned after the Fukushima nuclear disaster, and plans to do a full-scale installation in the town later this year. Nissan has been testing the idea of use leaf batteries for a while with its Tesla Power Wall like X storage program. The idea of using the batteries in an off-grid street light, however, is new and appears to be just the start of Nissan's new push into grid and off-grid storage. Much like its alliance mate Renault, Mercedes and others, Nissan also has a grand plan to use batteries from old and destroyed EVs in several ways. One is for residential homes and buildings that use solar or wind energy, storing energy and releasing it at night or if the power goes out. Another is to use the batteries for smart booths that could power cell phones and other devices. Finally, Nissan unveiled a whimsical scheme, a part converting the bursting energy of children into electricity while they play. Children's energy during the day keeps the park bright and safe at nighttime. Much like Renault's Smart Island, Nissan's Light Reborn project is more a small-scale test and way to market its green credentials. Nami, Japan 
is a particularly poignant location for a test, as the nearby Fukushima nuclear plant lost power during an earthquake and tsunami, causing a partial meltdown of the core. So far, only Tesla has truly made a big push into the consumer market with its power wall batteries and solar panels. By the time 2020 rolls around, however, and large companies like VW release mainstream EVs, the idea of recycling car batteries for the grid will be a lot more feasible and necessary.